subscribe. Hi everybody and welcome. My name's Alison, the online piano and the online violin tutor. Today is a video um, or a video on trying to give you some advice when you're buying a higher end violin. So some of you are saying that, um, or you, you, I mean, you guys know by now that I always recommend the Stentor 2 simply because um, it's it's not sponsored by them or anything at all. Um, I've just tried a lot of violins, a lot of um, uh, student or beginner quality violins, and a few students have had some different various types of brands that they've come in and shown me. And the Stentor 2 seems to be the most consistent one with the, for the money, um, or for a bit of student quality violin, I think it's brilliant because it's got a nice, rich, deep tone and it has very, very minimal, if minimal, if any scratch on there at all. And the scratch is the last thing you want on the violin. However, if some of you are saying that you've got something like $500 or, you know, 400, 500 pounds and plus upwards to spend on a violin. And you're kind of asking me some advice on that. So I suppose, um, I can't really give you any advice as such, but I can give you a few, well, I can give you a little bit of advice. I know that's a contradiction in terms there, but I suppose I have some hints and tips of, of what you can do and what you can look for. So it is very, very, very difficult for me to advise you at this level, simply because each violin is personal. Um, I absolutely love this violin, otherwise I wouldn't have spent loads and loads of money buying it and exchanging my other one if it wasn't gonna be worth adding the extra money to it to part exchange, the one I had before for 15 years for this one. I've had this about four years now, I think. Um, but I mean, if, if I gave this to, to 20 people to try or to 20 professional violinists, all of them, or, you know, might, or half of them might say that this is rubbish, this is awful, this has not got the right tone, it's too light, it's too deep, it's too dark, it's too rich. So it's, just, it's completely personal, but for me, I absolutely love this, this violin and this has everything I need it to do. Whether or not I will exchange this later on down the line, I don't know, but for now, I love this violin. So violins are very, very personal. What I like, you might not like. What you like, I might not like. So it's just like, it's just like food, isn't it, at a restaurant. That's why there's a menu and that's why there's choice, because you can't please everybody in, in one or two meals. Um, so, I do recommend the Stentor 2 if you want to get a kind of student quality violin. I'll have a link to the Stentor 2 underneath. I don't know the price in dollars, but in English pounds, it's about 120 pounds from Amazon, something like that. So whatever that would be in dollars, I know it's over $200 worth in America. I Don't quote me on that, I really, really don't know, but I'll put a link to the Amazon link for the UK and the US place where you can buy the Stentor 2 on Amazon. Um, but I suppose the one main piece of advice I can give you when buying a violin above a student quality violin is to always try it out. Never, ever, ever buy a violin blind. Just for so many reasons, just folks, just please don't do it. Please don't just lob out 500 quid or 400, $500 and just, just open up a catalogue or look on the internet and go, yep, yeah, that one looks really nice. I like the sound of that. Nobody can categorise a sound. And the person who's written that website and said this this particular violin sounds like this, 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 and this, that's their opinion of, of how it sounds. So yeah, some of them might sound generically as they're telling you them, as, as they're telling you, but again, it's just, it's their interpretation. It's, it's their, it's their ideals of how that violin sounds. So please, when you're spending more than a student quality violin, then please, you must always try one out. The most ideal thing to do would be to go to a, a violin person or a violin shop or a proper violin shop, not just a music shop that would just buy catalogued violins from, from wherever, but someone who deals, someone who sells and repairs and that kind of thing. I think um, violin luthers or violin makers, dealers, that kind of thing. Someone who knows what they're doing, someone who knows what they're buying and someone who can advise you on the wood and, uh, and all this kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, always try out, never, never buy anything blind. Um, okay, even if you, even if you don't know what to listen to, even if you do have a bit more money to spend and you do want to go ahead and spend that extra money, even if you don't know what you want and you don't know what to listen for when you're trying it out, you will know what you don't like. 
So when I went to go and trade in my kind of the violin that I had when I was a teenager and it got me through my early 20s and everything and I wanted to upgrade it, I'd kind of squeezed it as much as a sponge and nothing would come out of it anymore. So I wanted something a bit, bit classier, a bit more professional that I, that I could take to the next level and, and do some really complicated pieces on. Um, I didn't know what I wanted and I didn't know the violin until I played it but I know I knew what I didn't like so I must have tried it took me about three or four hours I tried about 20 violins um, until I got to this one but like I say I knew I didn't know what I wanted but I knew what I didn't like so that can kind of help you sort of narrow it down a little bit um, and I suppose what to look for you're gonna get things like tones. So is it deep, is it dark, is it warm, is it sweet? So this is warm and sweet. This plays differently on the upper strings than it is on, does on the lower strings. So I guess you're gonna be listening for, is it scratchy? Because you don't want any scratch on there. So some of the scratch might be coming from you. Yes, it might be coming from you, but you also don't want a violin that's scratchy as well. And I can always tell this because when I have a student that has a student quality violin and it does sound very scratchy and they, they're, they're kind of moaning at me saying that, oh, it's, it's, it's awful, it sounds really scratchy. I give them this violin very carefully. <laughs> I tell them not to drop it. But I give them this violin to have a trial on and half 50% of the scratch disappears. So I know it's 50% them, 50% the violin that they're playing on. So if you've got a cheap and nasty violin, then it's going to give you a lot of scratch and it's going to make you sound worse than you are. If you played on a nice violin, okay, you might not be able to appreciate and get the most out of the instrument, but you will at least know um, kind of what to, what to look and what to listen for as well. So I guess the main things you are listening for is minimal scratch and what kind of tone you want and by trying different types of violins you will begin to hear the difference between the tones. So that's just a little bit of advice on, on buying a higher end violin. Um, I, when you get to the higher end violins, you're going, you're going away from the brands and more about who made the violin. So you're going older and older and older. So um, again, please don't ask me in the comments about recommending brands and have I played this and have I played that because I haven't honestly played a lot of brands. Um, and also what brands are available in, in the UK might not be available in America and, and wherever, other parts of the world and things. So I can't advise you on those. And again, what I might like, you might hate. So I could tell you, yes, go and buy a Stentor 2 because I think it's brilliant. You might buy the Stentor 2 and think, eh, it's okay it's yeah it's all right could have done better so you know it's 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 my opinion it's it's my advice that I'm giving to you my tips so it's up to you if you want to take them but always try a violin if you're spending more than a student quality if you're spending a good few hundred pounds or a good few hundred dollars never buy it blind that would be my one main piece of advice so um I'm going to stop talking now. Thanks very much for watching, folks. Um, and please subscribe and all that kind of stuff. Um, give the videos a thumbs up. And I shall see you all in the next one. Subscribe.